This lecture is an overview of the AWS Cloud Computing Platform. In this lecture, we will understand the AWS Cloud Computing Platform with respect to categorizing some main AWS services. AWS comprises over 200 products and services, including computing, storage, networking, database, analytics, application services, deployment, management, machine learning, mobile, developer tools, and tools for the Internet of Things. I have chosen a few main ones as examples to bring the main objective. How various AWS services fit into the larger scheme of things to help understand the AWS cloud computing platform. Let's start with AWS's global cloud infrastructure. AWS's global cloud infrastructure is its core foundation. I think it's challenging to imagine AWS's leadership position in the cloud computing platform without AWS's global cloud infrastructure. AWS has data centers in multiple locations all over the world. The data center clusters are called AWS region, and a single cluster of data centers is known as the availability zone. In addition to availability zones, AWS's global cloud infrastructure has the concept of local zones, wavelength, and outposts. These are there to help improve the network performance of applications that have low latency requirements. Then we have foundation services that leverage AWS global infrastructure. We can classify foundation services primarily in the compute, storage, security and access control, and networking categories at a high level. AWS has EC2 service in the compute category, one of the oldest AWS services. EC2 is the abbreviated form of Elastic Compute Cloud. EC2 is used to launch virtual machines on the cloud. These launched virtual machines are called EC2 instances. For example, you can launch Linux, Windows, and Mac EC2 instances. Furthermore, AWS also has auto-scaling service. This category is beneficial if you have a strong service level agreement or non-functional high availability and performance requirements. Autoscaling service can be used to launch instances automatically depending on some metrics, for example, if CPU utilization is over 70% of total capacity, or request count per target, etc. Finally, there is also ELB service, Elastic Load Balancer. Usually, an Elastic Load Balancer is used with autoscaling service, which distributes incoming requests on available EC2 instances. Let's move on to the next category of foundation services, the AWS storage category. AWS has different types of storage services. For example, AWS has S3 service to store object storage type. Then there is an EBS service, an elastic block storage service to store block storage type. For example, when we keep files on disk, the operating system stores files in blocks. AWS also has an archival service that stores files for later retrieval. Let's move on to another critical category of foundation services, security and access control. This category has IAM service, the abbreviated form of identity and access management. IAM service manages users, groups, and their permissions. For example, what services and resources AWS users can use. AWS also has Secrets Manager service for managing encryption keys. Furthermore, AWS Certificate Manager service generates and manages SSL certificates. Another important category of foundation services is networking. In this category, AWS has NAT Gateway service that is conceptually similar to a router. NAT Gateway service connects EC2 instances to the Internet on an internal private network. Additionally, AWS has Direct Connect service to set up a VPN to secure your on-prem network to the AWS cloud network. The Direct Connect service also has a functionally identical role to VPN, but Direct Connect is much more secure and has higher bandwidth than VPN. Next, we have platform services that leverage AWS global cloud infrastructure and foundation services. In the platform services, let's look at AWS services under the database category. AWS has a relational database service called RDS. 
Using RDS, we can launch relational databases such as Oracle, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQL Server on the AWS platform. AWS also has its NoSQL database service, such as DynamoDB. Additionally, AWS has caching services such as ElasticCache and Redis, which are AWS cache services offering. Under the Enoetic category, AWS has EMR service, which essentially includes Hadoop, Spark, Hive, and some other related services. AWS also has Kinesis service for real-time processing, a Kafka alternative on AWS. Kafka is an event streaming platform. AWS also has data warehouse services such as Redshift and many other related services to help build data pipelines on AWS. Under application services, quick examples are SES, Simple Email Service, SNS, Simple Notification Service, and many other related services. Then, in the Deployment and Management category, AWS has ECS, which stands for Elastic Container Service and CloudWatch Service for monitoring and logging, and many more. In mobile services, AWS has many services to build and deploy apps on Apple's iOS and Google's Android platforms, for example, Location Service, API Gateway, AWS Amplify, and many more. AWS also has a rich set of services to build AI, ML, and Internet of Things related applications. For example, Amazon SageMaker in machine learning and AI, Amazon Comprehend for advanced text analytics, Amazon Code Guru for automated code reviews, Amazon Forecast for demand forecasting, Amazon Fraud Detector for fraud prevention, and many more. In addition to the above, AWS has services in the Enterprise IT Applications category such as Amazon Workspaces, Amazon Workmail, and Amazon Word Docs. These applications for corporate email, calendaring, document collaboration, and virtual desktops make it easy to meet employees' usability, performance, and reliability expectations and help improve sharing and collaboration. As I said in the beginning, a lot can be discussed in each category, but I think this information is sufficient for the scope and objective of this lecture. In this lecture, I discussed a high-level overview of some popular services in different categories or types. This should help you wrap up the idea about how various types of AWS services fit in the larger scheme of things on the AWS cloud computing platform.